I'm Dr. Valentina Cannone. I'm an associate consultant in the Cardiorenal Research Laboratory at the Cardiovascular Department and Mayo Clinic. And uh, today, I'm happy and honored to share the main findings and main uh, message from our study, aldosterone hypertension and antipertensive therapy insights from a general population that will be published in Mayo Clinic Proceedings in the August issue. Let me um, summarize briefly what our study was about. We investigated the relationship among aldosterone, uh, hypertension, antihypertensive therapy, clinical profile, and arterial natriuretic peptide in uh, uh, the clinical setting, of course, of hypertension. So our cohort was uh, a random sample from the general population from Olmsted County. Olmsted County is the county where Mayo Clinic and Rochester are located. And uh, it included uh, 1,550 subjects. So our first analysis was a comparison between subjects with hypertension versus subjects without hypertension. And we analyzed aldosterone levels. And we found that aldosterone levels are significantly higher in the subjects with hypertension compared to subjects without hypertension. In order to exclude subjects who might have primary or secondary hyperaldosteronism, we excluded all those subjects that had aldosterone levels above the upper normal range. And even when we analyzed our cohort and we included only subjects with aldosterone levels within the normal range, we found the subjects with hypertension have significantly higher values of aldosterone levels when compared to subjects without hypertension. Then we stratified our cohort according to the number of antihypertension medications taken. So we uh, stratified a cohort of only hypertensive subjects and they were stratified according to antihypertensive medications taken. And we found that the higher the number of antihypertension medication taken, the higher the values of aldosterone levels. We also analyzed uh, uh, the clinical profile in our stratified cohort, stratified according to antihypertensive medications taken. And we found that the increasing number of antihypertension medications was associated with the worse metabolic profile characterized by higher triglyceride levels, uh, higher body mass index, uh, lower protective HDL cholesterol, higher values of insulin and glucose. But also the increasing number of antihypertension medications was also associated with a higher prevalence of cardiovascular, metabolic, and kidney disease. In our cord, also, we evaluated uh, um, the relationship between uh, aldosterone and arteriosclerotic and peptide. And we found that in, un in hypertensive subjects, the higher the values of aldosterone, the lower the values of alternative peptide. So we found a kind of an inverse relationship between these two hormones. Let's stay focused on aldosterone levels. We found that in hypertension, uh, subjects, so with hypertension, have uh, significantly higher values of aldosterone compared to subjects without hypertension. Why did we want to analyze that? Because we know from previous studies that uh, uh, aldosterone levels, even within the normal range, is uh, associated uh, with uh, uh, cardiovascular, metabolic, and renal disease. And uh, also aldosterone levels, even within the normal range, is a predictor of cardiovascular, renal, and metabolic disease. Our previous studies were conducted in the general population. This current study was conducted only in hypertensive subjects. The second message uh, was focused uh, um, about 
the relationship between uh, uh, aldosterone and uh, alternate red peptide. And uh, we found that there is uh, an inverse relationship between these two hormones in the context of hypertension. Why did we study these two hormones? Because they are both uh, two key regulators uh, of uh, blood pressure homeostasis. We know that aldosterone um, determines an increase in sodium retention and uh, determines an increase in blood pressure, whereas alternate retipeptide is a hormone, cardiac hormone, that induces an increase in diuresis, naturesis, and it has a vasodilatatory effect. So we wanted to investigate the relationship between these two hormones, and we found that in the clinical setting of hypertension, we have an inverse relationship. What does it tell us? It tells us uh, that probably the relative deficiencies that we found in terms of A and P might play a role in the pathophysiology of uh, hypertension. And uh, uh, our findings also tell us that uh, uh, aldosterone uh, higher values of aldosterone is clearly a feature of treated hypertension. And importantly, the more the antihypertensive medications, the higher the aldosterone levels, the worse the metabolic profile, and the higher the prevalence of cardiovascular, metabolic, and renal uh, disease. So what's the next step at this point? Our study was a cross-sectional study. So we reported observations, the relationships that we observed. It can't provide the mechanistic explanations for what we observed. So future mechanistic studies are needed to uh, explain uh, the um, observations, the relationships that we described in our study. Uh, for example, it remains of high importance to investigate whether the higher levels of aldosterone that we um, have seen in our, in our court are secondary to uh, the antihypertensive medications taken or the higher values of aldosterone are uh, secondary to um, the hormonal activations that is a consequence of the severity of hypertension. Another uh, uh, future study should uh, investigate uh, um, the relationship between aldosterone and hypertension and alternate red peptide and related clinical profile in accord with African Americans, because our study was mostly including white Caucasians. We know that African Americans um, are um, subjects at high risk of cardiovascular disease. We know that from recent studies uh, that African Americans uh, uh, might have a relative deficiency in terms of alternate red peptide. So it would be definitely of interest to, to perform the same study in uh, a different ethnicity like African Americans. And last but not least, it would be important uh, through future studies to investigate the potential therapeutic and implications of our studies. First of all, it would be important to um, validate uh, uh, the importance of measuring uh, aldosterone and alternate red peptide in the clinical setting of hypertension and uh, to um, provide a better, maybe, to provide a better assessment of cardiovascular and metabolic risk within the setting of hypertension. But also, it would be important to, to verify whether antagonizing aldosterone in combination with the potentiation of the alternate red peptide system, so compensating for the alternate red peptide deficiency that we found, if that would be a good therapeutic strategy for the future in um, treatment of hypertension. So there are uh, plenty of uh, new uh, studies uh, and scientific hypotheses to uh, validate, to um, uh, investigate. So thank you so much uh, for your attention. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. 
If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.